can't see anything without my glasses. Test, test. We gonna test it. Test, test, test. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, seriously. I forgot to turn the music off. Jesus Lord. Okay. Hi everyone. So I wanted to do this video just because of everything that's happening at the moment, you know, with the coronavirus um, and all of that. I just feel like any positive light that we can bring to China as a country and its people would be a good thing. I've never been to Wuhan, although I want to because I've watched some videos about Wuhan as a city. I'm following this girl called Blondie in China and she has a great channel. Um, she talks a lot about Chinese culture. She speaks Chinese herself, which is from Australia. If you're interested in Chinese culture, definitely go and watch it, it's worth it. Yeah, I've never been to Wuhan, I've been to Beijing, Shanghai, and I had the chance to actually live in two other big cities that are not as well known. I lived in Qingdao, that was my first city in China, and then I lived in Ningbo after that. But I'll just talk about Qingdao today, because it was my first experience in China. To be honest, China was never a country that really attracted me that much. I was always attracted to Asia, especially Japan, because I grew up with manga and stuff like that but never really China and uh, I came across this organization while I was at UD Ooh. <coughs> oh, excuse me okay. we used to have a lot of job fairs but this company actually came and did a presentation in our classroom and they were called Intern China we'll put a name here <laughs> so professional um, so yeah, they were called, they are called, because they're still up and running, Intern China. This person basically came in, talked about what they did, they are a, an internship provider company. And at the time, I believe they only had three locations in China. I will put a map of the, the cities they cover in China. But definitely Qingdao, obviously, Zhuhai, and there was a third one. I can't remember now, but I'll, I'll put them up. And they actually expanded a lot because now they are covering Taiwan, uh, Taipei, to be more precise. And they also expanded in Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh, and I believe in Mexico as well. So Qingdao is a coastal city. It's one of the major port cities in China, actually. They have a local dialect. I couldn't find any specific name for the local dialect. I don't know why but I believe it's called Qingdao dialect and apparently it's very similar to Mandarin Chinese so if you're learning Chinese it should be quite easy to understand again I didn't know any word of Chinese so it didn't change anything for me so I would say Qingdao is mostly known for three things so definitely its beaches, its beer and seafood obviously because it's a coastal sea. I had a lot of food when I was in Qingdao. Before I went to Qingdao I was not into spicy food at all uh, which might seem strange because I'm actually from Congo. People basically eat chili as a side dish in Congo. No joke, like my mom <laughs> every day um, she puts chili on her food. Anyways, that's another story. But yeah, I wasn't into spicy food or anything and really going to Qingdao really improved or developed my palate. Can you say that in, in English? Ça a développé mon palais. I don't know if you can say that in English. I'm gonna say it. No, if you're not into seafood, there are other options in Qingdao. Like I said, they have barbecue, they have halal noodles. I just remember we had a really nice restaurant near where we used to live. We used to go there like once or twice a week because it was so cheap and the portions were huge. Like you would eat so much for such a small amount of money and uh, it was right next door, like five minutes away from where we lived. So you can have those, you can have vegetarian options, but there is everything for everyone. Chinda is really well known for their seafood speciality. So they have sauteed clams, which is my favorite dish and still is to this day, like a good dish of sauteed clams with egg fried rice. Oh. Yes. So I have uh, eggplant and even eggplants I didn't used to eat but the ones I tried in Qingdao like yes you want to get on with that too. <laughs> it's so good. I remember it was quite sweet, it was quite soft, uh, probably fried 
uh, they do fry a lot of uh, the dishes, but it was just amazing, like really good. And what else do they have? They have sea cucumbers. Now, that's not so much my thing, but if you're into this, you know, just try it. Why not? I don't remember trying it actually. I think that was one of the things that was uh, too much for me. Like, you know, I can be adventurous, but not that much. Many things, obviously, fish dumplings, a lot of street food. Oh, they have, I remember having those, I think it was more for breakfast, those sort of uh, pancakes. They would put sometimes sausages or vegetables, eggs, and people would either eat that for breakfast or for a snack. I remember this because we used to have one near my office and also at the beach when we used to go, we used to get them as well. So good. So my battery is about to die, so I'm, I'm going to try to wrap up this video. I wanted to talk about the top 10 attractions, and while I talk about them, I'll put pictures and videos. So first attraction would be Mount Laoshan. And I went there two or three times, and it really was breathtaking every single time. It's the highest coastal mountain in China and it's known as the birthplaces of Taoism. The entrance fee is 90 yuan and the opening hours are from half seven to half four. You can get there by bus. The second attraction I've visited was Zhang Chao Pier or Zan Bridge. I'm trying to remember how to pronounce Chinese name. I used to be quite good at this, but you know, it's been a while. Um, I went there once and I still remember how busy it was. It's located at the north side of Qingdao Bay and it's one of these symbols of Qingdao. The entrance is free and the locals say that you cannot know the real Qingdao if you have not gone to that bridge. There are different beaches in Qingdao. There's beach number one, beach number two. I know I've been to one of them. I can't remember which one, to be honest. One of them was free. The other one, you had to pay for the entrance, but I think it was like two, five yuan, so really cheap. So if you're there during the summertime, it's definitely worth going. Zongshan Park, a super nice park. They have different gardens. I read that they have actually an annual cherry blossom festival, which is so on my bucket list. Like not necessarily this particular festival, but just seeing cherry blossoms in China or Japan. So if you have the chance to be there in April, May, then definitely go because I can imagine it's spectacular. See, there is the Qingdao Bear City. You can't go to Qingdao without going there, uh, visiting the museum, trying some Qingdao beer. Every year, Qingdao actually holds an international beer festival. Motto is Ganbei to the world. So Ganbei is something you say when you're drinking with friends or even with you know, colleagues. So Ganbei is like cheers. Zhangshan Temple. It's a Buddhist temple in Qingdao based on Zanshan Mountain. It's facing the sea, beautiful, and the entrance fee to go there is 80 yuan. Another attraction that you must see while in Qingdao, you can't really miss it. I mean, <laughs> it's red, it's 30 meters high, it's the May 4th square. It's gorgeous, it's really big. It basically commemorates the significance of Qingdao in the May 4th movement that was started by students and they built this structure to commemorate that. Yes, those are the places you should see if you go to Qingdao. Intern China was good because they organized trips outside of Qingdao as well, so I visited other places. I didn't do everything in Qingdao, but I did most of it. And also one thing I forgot to mention is that in terms of transportation, I mostly use taxis and um, buses, local buses. Very cheap, easy to get by. I think I had the app DD at the time, or I definitely had DD when I was in Beijing. But basically in China, you can just hail a taxi on the street, which, you know, sounds easy, but it really wasn't that easy because when you're a foreigner, they don't always stop because I guess they just don't want to, the hassle of having that awkward conversation with foreigners that don't speak Chinese, trying to make them understand where you want to go. And 
some of them just don't, they don't have time for that. So I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed doing it. It was really nice seeing all this footage from Qingdao. And if you have any recommendation, please let me know. I'd love to go back to Qingdao one day. And I definitely want to go back to China because there are so many other places I haven't been to that I want to visit. If you've been to Qingdao yourself, please let me know. I'd love to know what your experience was like. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching.